Everyone is part of a bigger story. It's a bigger story than you can imagine. It's a big story about a really big God. Discover the story that shows you the character of God. Hey, I'm Caleb, and I'm setting this up just for you. It's my Bible. You can check it out on the big screen, on a tablet, or flip through the pages of an actual book. Any way you choose to read it, this is God's Word. God inspired dozens of writers over hundreds of years to record his story. How he loves us so much, he sent his very own son Jesus to live with us and die for us and return to life. God gave everything to make a way for you to live with him forever. He thinks you're that valuable and he shows it through his amazing kindness. I have four stories right here that walk us through what kindness can look like. We start off in the book of Ephesians, where the Apostle Paul writes a letter to the believers in Ephesus. He reminds them, Be kind and tender to one another. Forgive one another, just as God forgave you because of what Christ has done. Kindness isn't just a nice idea. It's something you do, all because God was first kind to you. Let's take a look at kindness in action with a trip to the Old Testament book of Ruth. Here, Ruth is all alone when her husband dies. But instead of caving in, she looks out. Ruth befriends her mother-in-law, Naomi, on a long journey to a foreign land. She works hard to provide food for Naomi, and as she puts herself on the line, Ruth discovers that she's not the only one who can show kindness in a big way. Time to hop back to the New Testament and the book of Matthew. Jesus himself points out that kindness isn't just for those who are kind to you. He tells a crowd, Suppose someone forces you to go one mile. Go two miles with them. See, under the law, a Roman soldier could force a Jew to carry his heavy pack for an entire mile. That's totally unfair, right? But Jesus blows the lid off of that. One mile, that's required. But what if you choose to go two? That's an extreme act of kindness no one will forget. Let's wrap up in the Gospel of Luke. Here, Jesus tells the story of a man on a road trip. The guy takes a bad turn and ends up in the wrong part of the desert where robbers attack. They take all he's got and leave him for dead. Still, the injured man's got a chance. Two religious leaders are coming his way. Will they help? Or will it be the man from Samaria, the place every Jew avoids? When things look dark, kindness can turn up where you least expect it. True kindness shows that everyone is valuable because everyone is made in the image of God. And I can't wait to see how it plays out in you and me.
Don't look like me, don't act like me, don't Don't even think a thought like me But you matter to me definitely Definitely It don't matter Cause you matter you Kindness fits everybody Everybody wants kindness Kindness serves everybody Everybody needs kind kind kindness Kindness fits everybody Everybody wants kindness Kindness serves everybody Everybody needs kind kind kindness Why do we always run and hide? Pick our sides Say we tried Irrationally We scream and shout Get it out We keep our doubts Indefinitely But now I think it's time We walk across like me don't act like me don't don't even think a thought like me but you matter to me definitely definitely it don't matter cause you matter kindness fits everybody everybody wants kindness kindness serves everybody everybody needs kindness kindness fits everybody everybody wants kindness kindness serves everybody everybody needs the world we want won't happen in our blindness. No, oh, 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 oh. I'll do my part and meet you here with kindness. Two, three, four. You don't look like me, don't act like me, don't. Don't even think a thought like me, but you matter to me definitely. Definitely, it don't matter, cause you matter. Kindness fits everybody. Everybody wants kindness. Kindness serves everybody. Everybody needs kind, kind, kindness. Kindness fits everybody. Everybody wants kindness. Kindness serves everybody. Everybody needs kind, kind, kindness. It's me, super fan Haley, and I'm so excited because it's game day! Woo! Hey, please do pardon my exuberance. I tend to get a teensy weensy bit excited whenever I talk about game day! You see, being a fan is important to me because it's the perfect way to show your favorite team kindness. Kindness is showing others they are valuable by how you treat them. Being a super fan is how I show my team what they mean to me. They bring me so much excitement and joy every time they win. I, 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 feel, I feel like I'm gonna burst. And even when they don't win, they're still so much fun to watch. That's why I cheer so loud. It's why I put on face paint and make a fool out of myself. <laughs> but kindness is bigger than just being a fan of a sports team. We should be kind to everyone. We should be fans of the people we see every day. Woohoo! Go everyday people! Way to be! Normal! Woo! But everyday people? don't always fill me with excitement and joy. They're not always fun to watch. So why should I be a fan of everyday people? Is there even a point to kindness? Of course there is! And you'll find out what it is in today's story. Too much! Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, see you soon. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, 
stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 32. Sally Jessup and May Lynn lived in the same town and went to the same school. And both girls had YouTube shows about slime that racked up views from across the world. Get slimed with May! Sally's Slime Creations. The two girls were polite to each other in the hall at school. Hey there. Hi. But they weren't exactly friends either. I'm doing glow in the dark slime next week, so you should do something different. Look, I give my viewers what they want. Which is basically the same thing over and over. Rainbow sand slime, rainbow unicorn slime, rainbow crunchy slime. You're just jealous how many views my rainbow glitter slime got. Whatever. Plus, you use borax in your slime. It's not safe. Is too. Liquid starch is way better. The two girls glared at each other and marched off. A few days later, May watched Sally's newest episode. Sally's Slime Creations. She really should get better theme music. Here's a super important PSA before we get started. You've probably seen some slime recipes that use borax. But borax isn't safe or healthy. Hey, that is not true. I know there's another YouTube show telling you to use borax for the best slime. But in my opinion, you should just unsubscribe to that channel. What? And now it's time for some rainbow fluffy slime. You have got to be kidding. Sally just told thousands of people to stop watching my show. Well, I am unsubbing her right now. May couldn't stop thinking about what Sally had done. I cannot believe her. In the cafeteria at school the next day, Sally walked over to where May was sitting with some other friends at the lunch table. Can I sit here? No way, she can't sit here. When Sally spilled her backpack at the lockers. Oh no. May pretended not to notice and marched right on past. That evening, when May recorded her next episode, she had an announcement of her own. Today on Get Slime with May, I've got an amazing guest to tell us all about the science of slime. But first, I need to warn you about another slime channel. Someone's telling you not to use borax. Well, you should hit unsubscribe fast cause she's a liar. Borax is completely safe and makes the best slime. Now it's time to welcome our guest, Wendy Newton. She's a chemistry expert. May switched to a split screen with her guest a middle-aged woman with wild curly hair and sleepy eyes. Hi, Wendy, welcome to the show. I'm honored to be here. I gotta ask, you think borax is the best thing to use for slime, right? Borax is great if it's used correctly. I think God has given each of us the smarts to look up safety guidelines and be wise about it. Oh, yeah, of course. So let's get down to it. You're a chemist. How cool is that? You could say we're all chemists. I mean, just baking brownies is chemistry. That's right. What kind of chemistry are you whipping up for your dinner? Oh, well, it's actually uh, uh, uh 3 a.m. here. Wait, what? I'm in Dubai right now. But that's like halfway around the world, so it's night. I... Oh, I am so sorry. I woke you up. It's all right. You said that in your email. I forgot. It's okay, really. You're being so nice about it. Hey, kind is cool. There's this verse in the Bible from the book of Ephesians. It's kind of my motto. Be kind and tender to one another. Forgive one another, just as God forgave you because of what Christ has done. May frown. She had to admit she wasn't always great at being kind when someone made her angry. Look, I've messed up so many times and God has wiped the slate clean every single time. That makes it a lot easier to forgive when other people make mistakes. Like calling in the middle of the night? Hey, aren't we a little off topic from slime? Um, 
I think I'm gonna have to restart this recording. I said some stuff about someone else I need to delete. And how about I call you back in the morning? I mean, my morning, your afternoon. Hmm, hmm, that sounds fantastic. May leaned back in her chair and released a long breath. I haven't been very kind at all, even a little. Grabbing her phone, May started a DM to Sally. Hey, I'm sorry about the lunch table thing. I think Rainbow Slime is pretty cool. Maybe we should do a show together sometime. May wasn't sure how Sally would respond, but she did feel better knowing that she'd taken the steps toward being kind instead of focusing on payback. So what's the point of kindness? Why should we be fans of other people? The answer is here. <laughs> Ephesians 4.32, the Apostle Paul wrote, be kind and tender to one another. Forgive one another just as God forgave you because of what Christ has done. God sent Jesus to die for our sins, not because we deserved it, but because that's how much God loves us. <laughs> Talk about kindness. And we can show God how much we love Him by being kind to others. That means forgiving people even when they let you down. I forgive you for spilling grape juice all over my favorite shirt. I still love you. It means helping someone even when you're not told to. Whoa, 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 don't move that refrigerator all by yourself. <laughs> let me help you out. <laughs> or I'll try to. Woo! And sometimes kindness means just being a fan. Thank you for packing my lunch for school. You make the best of lunches. The one thing to remember today is this. Be kind to others because God is kind to you. Be fans of other people. Then every day can feel like
coins! Get those coins! Get those coins! Get... Oh, man! I mean, everybody knows that's a trap. I can't believe you did that! What? That's so awesome. Hey, welcome to the So-and-So Show. I'm John. And I'm Brandon. Woo! Did you know that an estimated 145 million greeting cards will be sent this month? Wow, I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, people have said that the greeting card is a go in the way of the dinosaur, a dodo bird, or gremlin cereal. Ha, ha, classic. But I say no, I'm a huge fan of greeting cards. Me too. And do you know who else I'm a fan of? Who? Oh. Mail carriers who deliver those cards. So it's time to play rain, snow, or hail. You still get your mail. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> Ooh, these are nice blue shirts. Here's how this works. Brandon and I are going to climb aboard our mailmobiles and deliver greeting cards filled with kind words to the mail baskets you see here. The first person to deliver a card to all three of these destinations wins. Sounds kind of easy. <laughs> oh, well, I forgot to mention the snow, hail, and rain. Oh, ho, ho, ho. yes, you did. You did forget to mention that. Ha, ha, ha. Okay. Go! Woo! Yeah! Woo! Hey, I got oh, one. I got one! I got oh, one! I got one! Oh, oh the rain! Man. Oh, it's Woo! snowing! It's warm, warm water! Oh. Hey! Oh. oh, I got two! We're tied! We're tied! I'm getting so wet! Oh! oh. You know what? I think I'm done with this game. Yeah, me too. So, Brandon. Yeah, John? We're going to address the uh, Hans in the room. Oh, I think we should. <laughs> Me too. Ha! 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 Hans? Hans. 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 That is my name. Do not allow it to slowly erode through overusage. Uh, everyone, this is our friend Hans. Uh, he thought it would enhance the overall sound atmosphere of the show if we had a studio audience. So This is correct. So we put him in charge of getting one together. Yeah, th then we had second thoughts. So we tried to call him to cancel, but apparently Hans doesn't have a phone. This is correct. Ha, 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 et cetera. What? Ha, 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 et cetera. <laughs> What's so funny? Did you bring your own sign holder? He comes with me everywhere. He's very quiet. Why are you the only person in the audience? Ah, I called some people, but no one came. I thought you didn't have a phone. This is correct. I do not have a phone. But I do have a window. Hello, people. I am Hans Decibel, audio engineer. You will come to a show with me. You will have a great laugh. Ha, ha. But no one came. But not to fear. I brought a dummy and a change of clothes for variety. We're going to get back to the show. Yeah. Yay! <sighs> It's uh, Bible story time with Kellen. Huzzah! Hurrah! And more phrases like this. Hey, 
Hey guys, what's going on? <laughs> Did I say something funny? No. We've got a Hans in the studio audience. Yay! <laughs> You have a studio audience? Yeah, but don't get used to it. Boo! Take it away, Kellen. All right, then. It's cool that we have a fan in the audience today because it actually goes along with what we're talking about. The truth is, we can all use a fan sometimes, right? When we're feeling down or when we've messed up, it helps that we have people in our lives who are kind of like our cheerleaders. Oh, that's our cue, oh, Jackie. I heard it, Dee Dee. We're here for you, Kellen! Yeah, go Kellen! Woo! And sometimes it helps to have actual cheerleaders. This is Dee Dee and Jackie, the cheer squad. They are here to cheer us on. But not only that, they're here to help teach us how to be cheerleaders for others. Does that sound about right? Oh yeah, we're ready. We're... Jackie, are you ready? Yeah. Let's do this, Dee Dee. to one another. Sometimes that's all it takes to be someone's cheerleader. Just be kind. But don't take my word for it. Here's what the Apostle Paul wrote in his letter to the Ephesians. Be kind and tender to one another. Sounds simple. And it can be, especially if you're being kind to people who are kind to you. But Paul goes on. Forgive one another just as God forgave you because of what Christ has done. Sometimes people aren't kind to you. They're rude even. How do you respond? Are you kind and forgiving like Paul wrote? Or are you rude back? What do you say, cheer squad? Hey, Jackie. Yeah, Dee Dee. What do you say when you gotta forgive someone? Oh, I say this. I forgive you, I forgive you, not because it is kind, but for what Christ has done. I forgive you, I forgive you. Woo! We should be kind and forgive not because it's easy, and not even because someone has earned it. We do it because of what God did for us. He sent his son Jesus to die for our sins. Now, that wasn't easy, and we definitely didn't deserve it. But that's how much God loves us. That's how kind he is. And that's why we should be kind to each other. Well, help us remember what we've learned, cheer squad. You ready, Jackie? I was born ready, Dee Dee. You know what they say. No one minds when you're being kind. Here we, Here go. we go. k i n d n e s s k i S-S is how God expects us to treat one another with kindness. Now, let's give it up for the cheer squad. Yay! Go cheer squad! Go cheer squad! Great job, cheer squad. Way to go. Go cheer squad! Kindness sounds so simple when it's in a cheer. Yeah, but we know it can be hard. Kindness is one of those things where the more you do it, the easier it gets. Thanks, Kellen. No problem. I'll see you guys on the flip side. You know what? He's right. Kindness does get easier the more you do it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start right now. Hans, I'm sorry. 
I should be more kind to you. You really are a great audience member. That's just great. I poured my heart out like that for nothing. Well, hey, you know what they say. No one minds when you're being kind. <gasps> you're right! <laughs> oh, reveal the question! What does kindness look like? Oh, it looks like this. Yeah. Uh, it could also look like giving up your place in line or saying please and thank you. Uh, oh, yeah. Or, or it can be big stuff, too, like uh, letting go of a grudge and forgiving someone. Mm -hmm. Aww. Hans is back. Yay! Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I... I, I... <sighs> Well, I think that's our show. And it was a good one. You did great, John. Hey, yeah, so did you, Brandon. Thank and you. so did you, Hans. We'll see you guys next week. Yeah, see you next week. Aloha. Woo! <laughs>